Hi friends, welcome to my channel Interesting Engineering. In our today's video, we shall discuss about the first instrument, D. Arsene Well Galvanometer. Before entering into the topic, let me tell you something. Whenever we describe about any instrument, we need to follow a specific format. This format will help us in understanding the instrument concept easily as well as it will help us in fetching more marks in our exams also. That format is we need to explain about its principle first, then we have to explain about the construction of the instrument, then we need to explain about its working, then we have to list out the merits, drawbacks and applications. So going back to the topic. The first instrument is the Arsene Well Galvanometer. So this is an instrument which is meant for measuring the current flowing through the circuit. This is a very sensitive instrument. Why is that? It can have a deflection even for a small amount of current flowing through the circuit. And this is also an indicating type of instrument because the output is represented in terms of deflection of the pointer. The most important thing is it works on the principle of Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. So this is our diagram and here when we look at the diagram the first part is the iron core and uh, surrounding that iron core is the number of turns of copper coil. So that copper coil acts as the moving system and this moving system is placed in between the two pole pieces of magnet and this entire arrangement is suspended at the top by means of a phosphor bronze wire and at the bottom it's suspended by means of spring arrangement. So this spring arrangement helps in the flexible movement of the coil uh, depending upon the current flowing through it. So here when we look at the bottom diagram here the it is the same thing is depicted here and here this is the moving coil arrangement and it is placed in between the two pole pieces of magnet. So for any deflection of the pointer any deflection of the coil we, uh, we should have a constant uniform radial magnetic field. So this magnetic poles are arranged in such a way that it is uh, curved. So the curved arrangement helps us in providing a radial magnetic field which means for any uh, position of the pointer the angle between the magnetic field and the position of pointer will always be at 90 degree. That's why it is called radial magnetic field. So let's discuss about its uh, construction. It consists of a thin moving coil wound over a non-metallic frame and the entire arrangement is placed in a radial magnetic field produced by a permanent magnet. So next comes its working. So let's see here when a current carrying coil is placed in a magnetic field the magnetic field produced by the current interacts with the magnetic field produced by the permanent magnet. Due to this interaction there develops a torque which deflects the coil which can be seen by the deflection in pointer. Let's go back to the diagram. So here when we look at the diagram here we have a iron core which is surrounded by number of turns of copper coil and this arrangement is placed in between the pole pieces of magnet. So when current flows through this coil, when we pass current through this coil, there will be some sort of uh, magnetic field developed due to the current through the coil and already he, uh, we have a magnetic field due to the magnetic poles present here. So these two magnetic field will interact with each other which causes the coil to deflect. So the coil in, uh, in the center will have some sort of deflection 
which is due to the force uh, that is developed due to the interaction of these two magnetic fields so that force is nothing but the torque so that torque is called the deflection torque so let's go back to the working so the deflecting torque td is equal to n i b a sin theta so the torque which is developed to deflect the um, pointer deflect the coil is represented by means of td td refers to deflecting torque and that is equal to n i b a sin theta where n is nothing but the number of turns of coil and i is nothing but the current flowing through the coil b is the flux density area is uh, a is the area of the coil and theta represents the angle between the magnetic field and the position of the coil and as i said earlier this will always be equal to 90 degree so here when we look at this equation we could find that in terms n b a and theta these are all the constant terms so td will always be proportional to i that is the current flowing through the coil so uh, this deflection has to be um, controlled to read its deflection how can it be controlled so uh, as we uh, have discussed earlier the coil is supported by means of spring at the lower end so that spring provides a opposing force the force that is that causes the deflection of pointer will be opposed by the force developed due to the spring at the lower position lower portion so that force is nothing but the controlling torque we can call it as a controlling torque and that is represented by t suffix c t c and that is equal to k into theta where k is nothing but the string stiffness and theta is nothing but the deflection of the coil so uh, the controlling torque is developed by means of spring arrangement and it is represented by tc and it is equal to k into theta where k is the string uh, spring stiffness and theta is nothing but the deflection of the pointer deflection of the coil so we have uh, developed two equations that is the deflecting torque equation and the controlling torque equation so when a coil is acted upon by two forces when these two forces becomes equal the coil will remain in a steady position that is the force that causes the deflection of pointer when it is balanced by the force controlling the uh, controlling its deflection or equal then the coil will come back to a steady position that's why i have equated here td is equal to tc where td i have said earlier td is nothing but ni ba sin theta and tc is nothing but k theta so as i have said earlier the sin theta will become one due to Uh, theta uh, is equal to 90 degree because of the presence of radial magnetic field so sin 90 will be equal to 1 so we can eliminate this sin theta term so it is ni ba equal to k theta so we need the value of current through the coil so i am keeping this current in the left hand side and bringing all other constant terms to the right hand side of the equation so i is equal to k divided by nba into theta so this k by nba i am giving it a, a new constant called g so i is equal to g into theta <coughs> so this g is called the galvanometer constant therefore the current through the coil will be proportional to the deflection through the coil so let's see about its advantages this instrument is not affected by uh, magnet uh, strong magnetic fields 
and the second advantage is this is an accurate and reliable instrument the output that we obtain in this instrument will always be more accurate and this instrument has a uniform scale arrangement then we shall see about its disadvantages its drawbacks overload can cause damage to the instrument since it's uh, placed in the magnetic field so when we apply an uh, overload to this instrument it can cause damage to the instrument change in temperature can also bring changes to the restoring torque so uh, depending upon the variation in temperature there occurs variation in the spring arrangement causing changes in uh, st string stiffness resulting in changes in the restoring torque so this change in temperature causes variation in its output that is the major drawback here and it can also be not used for ac measurement we can uh, apply it only for measuring direct current values uh, but we cannot uh, able to measure uh, alternating current values then we shall see about its applications this instrument is used to measure current flowing through the circuit this is the first main advantage first main application of this instrument and this instrument can also detect the direction of current flowing through the circuit by means of uh, as, I, as i said earlier in the drawback which cannot be used for measuring ac values so uh, by means of which we can able to identify the direction of current flowing through the circuit and apart from measuring current values it can also be made use of uh, to measure voltage values also by making some sort of modifications in the circuit so these are all some of the application point of view for this uh, dearson well galvanometer and Uh, so we have seen about dearson well galvanometer it's a instrument for measuring ac val uh, sorry measuring current values in the circuit and this operates based on the uh, torque developed due to the magnetic fields interaction so uh, this current current through the galvanometer can be measured by means of deflection of the coil So this is about the Dearson well galvanometer. In our next video, we shall discuss about ballistic galvanometer. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. Keep watching for more videos.